Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today at Ball and Wallace College, and we're here with Fong Man. Thank you so much for meeting with us today, Mandy. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yes. You have just been appointed as the composer in residence here at Ball and Wallace College. Congratulations. Thank That's you. a wonderful appointment. What does that mean? What do you do as composer in residence at a, at a university like this? Um, I write music for the student, for the faculty, and then um, I teach classes, right. um, teach composition, um, and then encourage um, contemporary music. Contemporary music, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you are uh, a composer yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, you studied originally, you grew up in China, in the south of China, near, near Hong Kong? Mm -hmm. Canton right. province, right, right? right? And then you went to school in Beijing. Mm -hmm. um, for my college. For yeah. college, right. yeah. And then where did you go from there? Because you've you've been all over the world with your with your schooling. Right after I finished my um, um, bachelor degree right. uh, in Beijing, and then first I went to uh, Colorado Boulder for two years, and then I transferred to Cornell University. Cornell? Got an I MFA there? MFA and DMA. Okay. Um, but um, in 2006 to 7, I was in France, in Paris, uh, yes. to at IRCOM, one um, part of the Pompidou Center. Pompidou Center, yeah. yeah to uh, study computer music. Um, that sounds great. Yeah. So you involve you you use computers in your music, right? Right. right. How do you how does a composer these days? Do they make? Does anybody make music without a computer these days? I mean, isn't that just the way you have to do it? Mm, I think uh, there are many composers still. Um, they just use hands to write the scores, and they still write very beautiful music. Right. So, um, but um, with a computer, um, could, can create. For example, for electronic sound, we can create more colors, and like timbre. Color means timbre. Yes, right? timbre, yeah. And then um, can create a more effect. Um, for example, for my music, I, I like to have some theatrical effect. So a computer really helped me to create that effect. It helps you do that. Yeah. You, so. you take, talk about some of the music that you write, because you, you take, for example, uh, old Chinese opera, mm -hmm. and you take the voice, Right. And you transcribe that, if mm -hmm. you will, for what clarinet or some other instrument. And but you run artists. it through a computer, right? Right. How right. do you do that? Um, I think at first, uh, because I wanted to use a real instrument um, to imitate the voice, um, first I have to understand the voice, how the sound, the spectrum of the voice. So use a computer to analyze the voice and get the spectrum, get the quality, you know, all these things, right. get the information. And then that helped me to uh, create the sound um, for both orchestra or the solo instrument. Or the solo instrument. Yeah. And then sometimes you'll even run that solo instrument through some more processing live while they're playing? Right, for the uh, clarinet concerto, yes. Um, we have both the tape, uh, electronic piece, uh, pre-made, also, the live processing for the clarinet solo. Yeah. You, that was you, very fun. A lot of, a lot of fun. <laughs> that, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it yeah, really yeah. does. You've you've been presented by a number of different uh, ensembles mm -hmm. and new music ensembles, orchestras throughout the world. Mm -hmm. uh, places like uh, the LA Philharmonic, the Tokyo Phil, the new mm -hmm. music festivals all over the world. How do these different or orchestras and ensembles present your work? Does it sound different every time? Yes, I would think. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And the orchestra, they, they kind of have different habits. So it was also a very exciting thing for me to learn. Um, for example, my um, orchestra piece, Noir, was premiered uh, in France by um, Orchestra uh, de Loray in Metz, France. And then um, they have many rehearsals. Right. It's different from uh, China or the States. So Where you get like one rehearsal, maybe, yes, right? Le much less. But yeah. the thing is, um, we work together, and uh, from the beginning to the um, Astro concert, it's a big difference. Ah, right, so, right. Um, but for, for example, for Los Angeles Phil, we don't have many rehearsals, but the musicians are were already 
<laughs> really? Very prepared. So yes. when they come, the first rehearsal, they already sound together. Already so, together. Yeah, so yeah. then it's different with different orchestras. Yeah. It's exciting. Your, your music has been described by uh, the New York Times as inventive and breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get to hear some of your music here yeah. at uh, the Focus Festival mm -hmm. here at uh, Ball & Wallace which is, takes place every other year, mm -hmm. and it's going to focus almost entirely on your music and some of the music that influenced you, right? right, right. What other uh, musicians, composers have influenced your work that you're going to be presenting um, at the festival? First off, uh, it's my um, teacher at Cornell, um, Stephen Stuckey. Okay. Um, he's a very influential person, um, both of on my music, also um, the way of thinking for, for me. So, um, so we're going to play several of his pieces. Right. And um, uh, Lutosavsky and uh, Takamizu. These are two very famous 20th century composers. Vitor Ludoslavsky yes, and, and the Toro Takamizu, a Takamizu. Japanese composer. Okay. Um, so we'll play some of their pieces. Um, also, uh, my friend Derek Bernal, who's also the uh, clarinet soloist oh. uh, for my piece, and he's also a very good composer. Right. So um, we're going to play two pieces of his in the focus list. So it will be very exciting. Yeah. So this takes place between the 25th and the 31st of October, right here. We're in front of Coolis Hall, mm -hmm. uh, here on the campus of Ball and Wallace. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be symposia. People can come to rehearsals. Everything mm -hmm. is free, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And and tell us how it goes because on on the Thursday, what you're working with student uh, ensembles. Right. Um, we're going to have a convocation. Um, there will the three artists, me and Derek Bonnell, mm -hmm. who's coming from Princeton. Uh, who's now the uh, composer uh, in residence at uh, Advanced Study. Um, at Princeton, and also um, Kasumi, who's a faculty at the CIA. Um, she's a video she, artist. She's a video artist, right. and we collaborate on the piece for video and uh, um, electronic sound. Oh, that should be awesome. So the three of us will talk about our collaboration. Right. And then there will be master classes. Um, so I will um, work with some students from the institute around, um, include the right. Wallace. Yes. And then you're going to do some works here in the auditorium with the the full orchestra, the big Ball and Wallace mm -hmm. Orchestra, mm -hmm. right? What what they piece are you going really to? They sound really good. Yeah, they do sound good. Yeah, they good. sound really good. <laughs> Thanks to our great conductor, Dwight. <laughs> and and you would know because you work with some of the best orchestras yeah, in the world. I was totally shocked when I went yeah. to the rehearsal. I mean, I know they've been working very hard, the students and the um, the conductor. Um, but they sound really good, so <laughs> it's, great. it's really exciting yeah, to hear these pieces. I mean, I hear my pieces in different places, sure. but I never hear them together, you know. Yeah, it's just so yeah. amazing to, All weekend to even long. think about that. And then, and then what, the faculty are going to do some smaller ensemble work as on well? On Sunday, yes. Yeah, on yes. Sunday. And we are actually bringing a guitarist from, who's uh, finishing his DMA from uh, UC San Diego. And he's a very good guitarist. And he's going to play my the other piece that um, inspired by Peking Opera, and he's doing using all kind of devices to imitate the opera voice with electronic oh, sound. That should be so cool. Yeah, yeah. Also with lighting, and he's thinking about do some makeup and <laughs> makeup. <laughs> it's Halloween. It's Halloween, Halloween weekend. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so you're using fun, computers yeah. and video and processing. Right. Um, is this the future of, of uh, contemporary classical music? Because obviously, mm -hmm. pop music has just taken over the world, and mm -hmm. and it's been difficult for classical music to find an audience. Mm -hmm. And it seems that even the the CDs used to sell in the 80s and 90s, and now even that's not happening. You know. So, what is the future for this kind of music? I mean, do you think it, it is this inner inner connection with computers and video and kind of multimedia? Mm, I think uh, that's one direction. But I think even for a traditional ensemble, uh, we can still make um, fantastic music and to attract more audience. Perhaps in the 20th century, we, um, we didn't do good enough. 
that's why we are losing our audience. Right, right. But I think in 21st century, if everybody try harder, also um, try to, everybody um, try to promote our the music of our time, yes. which is very important. It really is. And then the audience, I'm sure they will appreciate much more if we, they get a chance to hear more. Now, I think because we lose we lose some of our audience so we program less contemporary music That's right and That's then right. we we have less audience right so if we do more work and i believe it will the situation will change well this is a fantastic opportunity for people at, at this focus festival right. contemporary music to get a sense of your music mm -hmm. and some of your predecessors the people that influenced you right and see some great musicians at work right, right. so hopefully this will will kick us off in the right direction thanks yeah, for taking time to talk with us mandy <laughs> thank you congratulations thank you on so your much. new position thank you thank you thank you hey it's thomas mulready from coolcleveland.com have a great week in cool cleveland <laughs>